Hey, what up everybody? I'm Cynical. And this is Dark Souls Remastered on PS4. And I don't know what part this is. I think it's 14 or 15, something like that. Maybe 15? You'll see in the title. I'm gonna guess 15. My headphones are a little bit high. Been using them to uh, listen to music and stuff because they're pretty good. I like them. So last time we ended up in An Orlando from Sin's Fortress. We completely uh, beat Sin's Fortress and got a little ride from a gargoyle or a batwing demon, if you may, to An Orlando uh, after beating the Iron Golem, which we had not much to do with. We just let Tarkus take care of it. Uh, but yeah, got a ride from a batwing demon to An Orlando. Uh, beat up a couple sentinels, hit the new bonfire, talked to a new firekeeper, switched a bridge around, walked on some rafters, fought some painting guardians, a, a couple gargoyles, actual gargoyles, not batwing demons, and um, another bonfire, a mimic, uh, you know, the first little part of An Orlando, and then we found this painting, got sucked into it because we had the peculiar doll from uh, the asylum. And here we are, and I'm going to level up a little bit. I also kindled the bonfire, and I need to put something else in that attunement slot there that I have empty. So I'm going to decide to do Vitality. I'm going to get Vitality, Endurance, and Dexterity up to 25 before I increase any more uh, of, of each one of them. Probably do more Dexterity after that, up to like 30. Then maybe some more attunement, and then maybe... Uh, everything up to 30, you know? Something like that. I think, um... Uh, having better attack is more important than... At this point. In the beginning of the game, it's endurance and, and vitality. In the beginning of the game, you should, uh... Increase your endurance and vitality quite a bit. If you wanna... Do well. And then, whatever, whenever you find your weapon that you wanna use for the playthrough or type a weapon or whatever. You don't have to use the same weapon like I do. I just do that for these videos. Um, then you start doing either dexterity, strength, whatever. Or both if you're doing a quality weapon. I didn't find like a, a pyromancy I want, that was uh, that I really wanted to put in that third slot so I just, just did power within. It's a really good uh, pyromancy but it's uh, hard to use. You cast it and then you lose health at a pretty alarming rate, like a toxicity type rate, but you also gain tons of strength, so if you can take somebody out with a, with a couple shots with that extra strength, it like doubles or triples your strength or something like that, I'm probably mistaken, but something like that. It's a spell that you cast it, you lose health like 20 HP at a time, and you gain like double your strength, pretty much. Something like that. So if you got a chance to attack something without being uh, hit back for a couple of hits, it's a good thing to do, but then you gotta heal up. Or you gotta be not getting hit for the life of that health bar, because if they hit you while you are you have power within active, your health, like, drops dramatically. Because you're already losing it, like, 20 HP a second, plus whatever they hit you for, you know, 100 damage or whatever. That's, like, gonna end up being 200 damage because of the uh, power within, also. This is just the beginning of the area. Painted World is just a side area of the game, but it's a really neat side area that I like, so I always go here. I never skip it. Really like it. Some people think it's too different from the base game, but I don't think so. It's supposed to be like a painting, a, a dream, uh, just a side area. It's not supposed to um, be like part of the main story. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think it's fine. I don't see it at all, like what they're talking about. I don't really see it, but I've heard that opinion before. That it kind of uh, doesn't fit in with the rest of the game, but uh, I think it does. I think it's one of my favorite levels, actually. 
until I see the DLC, because you never know. I could like a uh, DLC better, and I haven't seen it yet at all, except for uh, very slightly. I won't lie. I won't say I've never, ever seen the Sanctuary, Sanctuary Guardian or or Calamite or, uh, or Torius. Like, I've seen parts of the boss battles. Like, I'll see it come on, I'll watch it for a second, and then I'll turn it off, because I'm trying to go into it blind. So I'm pretty much going into it with a with with a pat like a like a pirate with the patch over my eye, half blind, not totally blind. I don't know what to do, but I've seen like the boss fights, uh, you know, half of them. I don't ever watch like the whole thing. I just kind of check out the first part. So going into the DLC like half blind, I would say, which I tried, definitely tried. Which I'm doing uh, with Sekiro as well. I don't think I've seen more than five minutes of Sekiro, and I've been trying really, really hard. Um, I don't even know like how I saw some of it. it. Must have been like a commercial that came on really fast, like an ad, because I've really been trying to black out on it, even though it's been like a year now or whatever it's been. I'm still pretty blacked out on it. Like compared to the the DLC here. Um, way better at uh, blacking out because I've never played it at all. This game I played and then the DLC came out and then I didn't get it for years and years and years. So, I wasn't sure if I was ever going to get it. So I watched a little bit of it. But as far as Sekiro goes, I haven't watched any of that. Probably a total of like I can't even tell you what any enemy looks like. I know it's a uh, like a more samurai type game than a fantasy dragon type game. It's more like a Japan samurai type game, uh, and it's supposed to be really hard. I've seen like one one enemy like, and what the character kind of looks like, and that's about it. And this scythe, I was just missing with it a lot in this part for some reason. It was overshooting. There's a lot of um, secret little areas in this level. You gotta go up, down, around, jump down, hop down, climb a ladder here, make a running jump there, go into the basement here, go to the roof there, jump from one ba roof to the other basement. Like, There's a few pretty hidden areas here. Luckily you won't, won't miss anything too significant. Like maybe uh, the black set, uh, painting guardian set, um, a twin humanity, a gold coin. You might miss stuff like that, but you're never you're not gonna miss like a, a like I don't know important key or or spell or uh, you know stuff like that. I think I know where everything is, but. You never know, cause there's sometimes there's a that item that you forget that you gotta fall down, you gotta do something wrong to get it, and then you don't do that thing wrong that time, and you don't get it. Like that item over there, I don't ever, I don't remember how to get that one, but I think it's further in the level. I don't think I missed it. I think it's just further in. Further in, we'll go into that building and maybe climb up and uh, get it. But you can see all these crow uh, demons or whatever you wanna call them around the level they swoop down on you you have to kind of hit a trigger point for them to do that though but when it happens and you're not prepared you can get two or three of them on you and they have a grab move and the grab moves pretty dangerous as well as these guys here they're I forget what they're called uh, see I never know what anything is called jeez I'm gonna literally go on the wiki and just read since I already know everything about this game besides the DLC. I do know you gotta hit these guys with fire. Or else they'll release a toxic cloud when they die. I know that. But I can't remember what they're called, what their names are. I think Phalanx is the guys we're gonna see later. I think they're just called Toxic... Uh, toxic something... Uh, hollows. But don't rem don't forget this here. You cut down this rope, just like we did at the beginning with the bow and arrow. And you'll get that item later. Uh, once you 
once we get into the bigger courtyard area. Make sure, make sure you're human here so you can get invaded by an uh, invader that, um, it's a scripted invader that, but you have to have, be human, you have to be human to, uh, get them. So a good reason to be human, if you're, especially if you're offline, if you're offline, there's like, I don't know, there's many ways to, uh, go about that. You can either be offline and human, that way you get all the NPC invaders and all the NPC co-op opportunities. You can be offline and hollow, that way you don't have to face any NPC invaders. So that way you don't have to face any invaders at all, because you're offline and you're hollow. But then you don't get the co-op opportunities. So you wouldn't have been able to get Tarkus or Beatrice to help you with those battles, which you really don't need. I mean, they're not the hardest bosses ever. It's just fun to watch an NPC just destroy a boss. Or you can be online and hollow, which means you can't get invaded at all, but you're, you could turn it back on and get invaded, you know what I mean? You can still, like, choose to have a co-op partner or choose to be invaded by, by becoming human. Or you can be online and human. That way you're inviting every invader, including real people and NPCs. So, since I don't have PS Plus right now, I can't go online with this game. So, I'm trying to be human and offline. So I can have as many NPC invaders as possible. And why would you want to do that? Because they drop the stuff. They drop items that you want. They drop humanity. They drop their weapon or their armor. Bitter Sour Chestnut removes parasitic egg from body. The egg bearers have chosen to serve the flame of chaos, and the eggs symbolize this selfless choice. Naturally, these chestnuts are forbidden, but are allowed under special circumstances. So Egg Vermifuge is the cure to the parasitic egg that you will... You can get an Isolith slash, uh... Um, like... Quaylog's Chamber, My Fair Lady area, where... Ingi is. You can step out into Isolith for a split second. Those enemies there can give you a parasitic egg in your head and you grow like an egg off the side of your head. And it gets you like some sort of extra stuff with Ingi. Since he has eggs on his back and stuff like you look he's like, oh you're just like me. Here, take this, you know, type stuff. And then you take the egg fear refuge and you get rid of it. So if you leave it on then it it looks crazy, and I think it... I don't know if there's any real, like, uh... Disadvantage to it, except for it makes you look crazy. And they decided to do the lawn mowing today? I thought that was Monday. That's great. I don't care, I'm probably just gonna power through it. This is a little bit shorter anyway. I might have to pause when they're right under my window, though. Hood worn by the alabaster clothed guardians of the painting in Anor Londo offers substantial protection versus magic. They have guarded the great paintings of Ariamis for ages, passing their duty down through the generations, but the reasons... I, I, I look at the other pieces, so don't worry. Don't worry, I know you're so excited to hear me read these descriptions. I know you are. Person that's probably turning it off right now because I just said that. Let's find it. Pick up where we left off. They have guarded the paintings of Ariamas for ages, passing their duty down through the generations, but the reason for doing so passed from all memory long ago. So, really good versus magic. They are the guardians of the painting. That's why they're called painting guardians. And, uh... There's none of them in the painting, but they are guarding the painting. I think there'd be a couple of them inside the painting, like they would have figured it out. Somebody was guarding a painting where you could go to another world. I would have six or seven of them there to jump you as soon as you uh, landed on the bridge, too. You know? Why not? They fight you on rafters. Why not fight you on a precarious bridge as well? That would be really cool, I think. Might as well... Uh, they're guarding the painting. They probably know more about it than most people. 
they could probably get inside of it eventually. I guess the problem is that they wouldn't ever be able to get back out, but if their only job is to guard it, then why not jump people as soon as they get in? But I guess if they are that confident that they're just guarding the painting, and that's their name, that they think maybe no one will ever make it inside, because they're so confident of their guarding abilities. Yeah, you gotta watch out for guys hanging off the edge in this area of uh, this whole area. The painting world. Yeah, lawnmowers and voice problems this morning. We're just having a fun old time, but we're gonna power through it. Take a pause when I got to and keep going. Can't stop till the bodies drop and the casket. Or can't stop till the body rot and the casket drop. Can't stop till their bodies rot and their casket drops. Here's another one of those dragons, the poison dragon that spews liquid all over uh, the ground. One that killed us in the Valley of Drakes. Remember that the one in the Valley of Drakes killed us. Foreshadowing. Large Silver Proud Knight and a Crow Demon to try to get our Junies. Junie Cakes. That's the jump move. That's the grab move. They jump into the air and they land on your head and they claw out your eyes. You do not want that. Don't let them land that move because it could kill you if you don't have enough endurance or vitality, I mean. See how the dragon's spitting? Just like the one in the Valley of Drakes. Ooh, he stunned me. Luckily, I got away with my flippy ring. You can stand over here and it won't get to you, so you could just shoot it with bow and arrow, which I should have done. I would have saved myself some time if I had done that. Usually, that's the opposite. But that's another discussion you could have. Play it safe with a bow and arrow. It takes a long time. It's not very good to view uh, for people to watch you just shoot a bow and arrow over and over and over and kill something. But it's super safe. And I may have to, uh, this, uh, lawnmower out here. Alright, hopefully they're far enough away now. But yeah, what, as I was saying, uh, shoot with the bow and arrow. It's safe. You could kill the thing, but it takes a while and it's not very good for viewing. Um, but if you die, you end up wasting time. So if you go up and get impatient like I'm doing right now, and you die, then you end up wasting time. So if you can attack it with your weapon and do more damage and not die, then you will uh, save time. If you can shoot, if you don't know for sure, you can shoot it with your bow and arrow, and probably save time because you could have died, and then you have to make the run all the way back. And in the end, you would have gained time because you used the bow and arrow, played it safe, and killed the dragon, and uh, didn't die. Cause that's the big. That's the. That's the way that will cost you the most time is if you die. Not shooting a bow and arrow for two minutes, uh, dying and having to go back through everything you just did. Is a good way to uh, make things take longer. We may have been able to beat this area this time, but now, I don't know. Plus, I make the video shorter, so could pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it for that. Let's get our humanity back, because I know there's an NPC invader in this place, and I don't want to miss it. I think he has something to do with pyromancy. I don't want to miss it at all, and I haven't missed one yet, I don't think. I can't even remember all of them. I'm trying to think. You got... The first one is, I think, Kirk. Is Kirk the first one in the depths? And then, uh... The Butcher. In Blight Town. And then this guy, maybe? In, uh, The Painted World. Jeremiah, I think his name is. I'm not sure. I've never tried to name all of the uh, NPC invaders. That's pretty hard to do. I know Kirk invades you like three times. At least three times. The 
Butcher invades you. Jeremiah invades you. That's all I can really think of. Is there any more invaders? You know, the red invaders that come, the NPC invaders? There's gotta be more than that, right? Can't really think of any. But yeah, if you kill these guys with fire, they won't explode acid cloud on you. Which, uh, is just annoying, mostly. So if you don't want to be annoyed, bring some charcoal pine resin to this place. Bring some, uh, arrows. So you can shoot down things. So you can kill that dragon safely. So, uh, at the end, I almost fell and died again. Do you see that? I'm just having a terrible time. I was doing so well not dying. I think I didn't die at all in the last two parts. Maybe three. And here we are, falling off things. Again. That's usually how we die. What did I fall off uh, the first time? I'm trying to remember what I fell off of. For our first death, I think. No, not our first. Our first death was on the freaking Taurus demon like an idiot. I can't remember, but we've had uh, like three or four falling death deaths now. And that's where you're going to die in this game. Even if you're really good and none of the enemies kill you, you might die to gravity. If I could bet, like somebody that's good at games, they and they play this game for the first time, and they say, I bet you I can beat it without dying. I would take that bet 100 out of 100 times. Because they're at least going to die once to gravity. Plus, there's a scripted death in the game, so it depends if you're going to be uh, that much of a, a sleaze ball, Because you have to die at a certain point. Unless you do a, a, a certain glitch that they wouldn't know about playing it the first time, ever. Where you can skip the scripted death. I've never skipped it, though. And I've, been pl I've played this game, like, 15 times all the way through. But yeah, there's a scripted death later in the in the game in the Duke's archives, where you get cursed and put in a cell. But you can skip it if you jump. You have to do a, a pretty hard jump on an elevator as an elevator goes up and down onto a balcony. It's a, and if you miss it, you die. So it's really hard. If you attempt it, you're attempting. You know, you might be dying. Anyway, so if you're trying to skip a death by attempting something that could kill you if you miss it. That's you have a lot of balls there. Cuz all you're trying to do is prevent one scripted death and by doing so you're risking a real death that is almost guaranteed cuz it's a super hard jump. So if you're on like a no death run and you're like I'm not going to die at all. I'm not even going to take the scripted death. I'm going to make the Duke archive skip jump on the elevator and you attempt that that far into the game after not dying the whole time I would just say it's scripted that's what I did on my new death run I just took the scripted death because you know it's scripted it's forced you can't you're not supposed to uh not die there so and that's how most people do no death runs they don't if there's a scripted death they just take it and say well you know I didn't die the game made me die once to put me in a jail cell or, re, you know, whatever the case is. Got our freaking soul stain back. That was a big waste of time, however long that was. Let me check out. I want to check it. Hold on. So, yeah, that was uh, five minutes. Pretty much five minutes of wasted time there. That's a lot. If you die more than once you die three times, that's 15 minutes every three times you die. That you're losing. Ooh, I got hit by it. I never get hit by that. I guess it's poison, because it built up my poison meter. I thought it was um the kind of spit that ruins your armor, but it was just giving him some damage, too. But no, it's poison. Duh. It's poison dragon. But yeah, I lost five whole minutes. It was like four and a half, but it's just easy to round it up to five minutes. That's how much time we lost. I did find something in, in a different area while we were on our way back. Uh, those With all those uh, rats, uh, we got a gold coin. So we didn't totally like retrace our steps and not gain anything. We actually 
found a different area and gained something. But that's about what you can expect. About five minutes of lost time every time you die. And that's at least, because I know what I'm doing. If you're a new player and you die, it could take you ten minutes. You could die again. You could lose your souls. You could... But yeah. If you die multiple times, just imagine. Five minutes every time you die. But let's kill this thing. I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit, because I already died once. And usually, <laughs> that's probably not the best way to go. But I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna die. I'm just not gonna go on that side. Because you can't fall off this side. You can only fall off that side. I decided to go over there for some reason. So I'll stay in the middle and on the left, instead of going on the right side. And as long as you go back and forth, you should be fine. Now get him to shoot on the left, and then you can come hit him in the middle. Just do like one hit. If you're brave, do two, but unless you want to get hit by the poison. Sometimes he does the same side, twice in a row. Like he didn't see you come down the middle. There he goes down the middle, because I was just in the middle, so I go over here. Give him a little hit. Run back. He did the middle again, so I'm going to run in, get another hit on his hand. Run back out. He's shooting on the left now, because uh, I, that's where I was. Maybe because I hit him? I don't know. Probably not. I missed with my uh, R2 there. Got him on his hand. I feel like I could hit him at least twice, though. So I should have been doing. Yeah, I feel like I could have been hitting him, like, twice. At least, but play it safe. Once again. See? Three times there. Saved us a couple of trips. Uno. Dos. There we go. Got him out of here. And you can actually make it to the end of the level right here if you would like. It's a glitch. It's a skip. Uh, it's not totally recommended because you're going to miss a bunch of the level. Blood shield. Alright. Blood shield's pretty good. It protects against a lot of things, I think. The blood shield, spoken of in the Lost Legends, the red of blood is slightly enchanted and boosts various resistances. And it's not lying when it says it boosts various resistances. I think it's the best in the game, at least at blood, at bleed. But I think it's poison, toxic, all that stuff. But if you do a jumping attack to this dragon butt, you can walk under it, which you normally can't. And you can drop down right here right there on that pillar and that's the end of the level that's the boss you just head straight ahead there's like one giant knight and a guy shooting arrows at you and then it's the end of the level so that's a you can skip to the end of the level there you're not supposed to be able to do that the dragon's not supposed to be able to stand up for some reason when you do a jumping attack to it it stands up this is like the morning of interruptions too man it's not. It's so early too, so I shouldn't be getting interrupted this much. But it's like seven in the morning, and we got lawnmowers. Oh, I guess it's eight thirty. My bad. But whatever. Who lo who mows the grass at quarter till nine? That's not very respectful. Would you want somebody mowing your grass at eight thirty in the morning? Eight in the morning. Eight fifteen. So I'm sure they started at like eight, because uh, that's pretty big. And it takes a while to get to me. So who who thinks in the comments that uh, you should be mowing uh, somebody's grass at 8 in the morning? I don't think that's very nice. And that means they just don't care about anybody. They just don't care about anybody. They just want to get it done. Or somebody doesn't care about anybody. Maybe it's uh, the, the place that hired them. As they said to be here at 8. But I think it's just the landscapers trying to get it done so they can go move on to another one. Just loudly mow people's grass at 8 in the morning. Yep. Does that sound uh, respectful to you? It doesn't to me. That's why I wake up early so I can get these done without any interruption. But still somehow I get interrupted. It's crazy. Go to bed a little early so I can wake up early. And I still get interrupted somehow. 
anyway, enough of my problems. Cars, cars blowed, blown up. I have to get a new car. Freaking washing machines screwed up. People mowing the grass at 8 in the morning so I can't do my videos. Phones, piece of crap. Laptops, piece of crap. PS4s, jet engine. Nobody wants to hear that, though. Sorry, sorry. It's the end of the video, though. Nobody makes it here. Who cares? I can say whatever I want right now. Say whatever I want. Nobody makes it to the end. These guys are actually good to farm for souls. You have to have a certain spell, though. You, you gotta set it up a certain way. They're all gathered together at the beginning there, around this uh, pillar. So if you run in and you do a certain spell that can kill them all in one or two shots, then um, you can run back to the bonfire and do it again. And like, keep doing it over and over and over. And the door to the bonfire... I thought there was a switch there, by the way. I guess it's not there. The door to the bonfire is right here. So yeah, you can go to the bonfire, hit it, you have to kill like one or two hollows, and then you run in, you burn them up with something. It might be Chaos Fireball, it might be Wrath of Gods, I don't remember. But you can kill them in one or two shots, all of them. They each give you like 500 souls. There's like 20 of them there, so whatever that is, you know, pretty cool. 10,000 or whatever souls per, per trip. That's almost as good as the Forest Guardians, but faster probably. But anyway, I'm going to cut it there, uh, just because uh, interruptions and trying to do them shorter anyway. Uh, so a little bit shorter each time. I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to go under 30 minutes, but um, maybe. We'll see. But 32, 33 minutes this time, not bad. Cutting a little shorter. Like, share, subscribe. We'll finish up this area next time. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.